Hey Eco Explorers, I'm Anna, an educator at the North Carolina Arboretum. For the rest of June, we are going to look into the Colors in Nature badge. And specifically this week, which is National Pollinator Week, we are gonna focus on bright colors in nature. June is a wonderful month to see bright colors. Brightly colored animals are active, brightly colored flowers are blooming. When you go outside, what bright colors do you see? One color that stands out to me is the bright orange butterfly weed. But why is it so bright? It's because they want to stand out. But the reasons as to why these living things want to stand out aren't always the same. Let's go consider a few of these. Let's start by looking at amphibians, since it's herpetology season after all. Which one, based on their colors, do you think is saying, oh look at me, I taste terrible, you don't want to eat me. We have the green frog, the spotted salamander, or the American toad. Nice, you're right, the spotted salamander. These salamanders can release a sticky liquid toxin through their skin when they feel threatened. So those bright yellow dots on their back warn predators that they're not tasty. Some organisms, like coral snakes, use their bright warning colors to also let others know that they're toxic. But some organisms only pretend to be toxic. The milk snake is non-venomous, but looks very similar to the coral snake. The patterns are slightly different, and that's the key to knowing which one is which. Red on yellow, kill a fellow. Red on black, venom lack. Our friend from last week, artist, educator, and landscape architect Preston Montague will tell us a bit more about this phenomenon called mimicry. Here's an example of butterfly weed. You'll see that the monarch butterfly, who has the color of orange to signify that it is toxic to birds, is also joined by another butterfly that is its mimic, meaning that there's another butterfly that looks almost just like the monarch. And although it isn't toxic, it's learned that if it reflects the orange color of the monarch, that birds think that it's toxic too. So it borrows that language from the monarch so that it stays safe from birds. Next, we're gonna see how birds use feather color to stand out, especially for attracting a mate. Out of these songbirds, which do you think uses their feather color to attract a mate? We have a tufted titmouse, an eastern phoebe, or an American goldfinch. Yep, just look at that golden goldfinch. Males will molt, meaning they'll replace their feathers with new ones, into a bright yellow plumage just in time for breeding season to attract those female goldfinches. In the winter, after breeding season is over, males will molt into a duller coat to be less noticeable to predators. Preston will talk about colors attracting mates in male and female box turtles next. Plants and animals also use color to attract one another. Here's an example of a box turtle, and you'll notice that the box turtle has a red eye. And that's how you know it's a boy. The boys use the red eyes to threaten other boys or intimidate them uh, because they may want to keep other boys out of their territory. They also use it to show girls how big and strong they are. You'll notice here that the throat of the boy hummingbird is red. It's possibly for the same reason as the box turtle. It's meant to threaten other boys so they don't try and take his territory and also meant to let the girls know that he wants to hang out. Wow, what fun facts. It's also important to note that within the distinct colors of nature, there are differences among individuals. For example, one of our education animals, Shelly the box turtle, doesn't have those common dark eyes like most females. She actually has a little more of a red color to them. And finally, since it is National Pollinator Week, we are gonna buzz over to bees. These pollinators are amazing at their job and they're attracted to colorful flowers to find nectar and pollen. Which of these flowers do you think attracts bees? Grape hyacinth, cone flower, crocus, or all of them? 
The answer is in fact all of them. Scientists have found out that bees are particularly attracted to those flowers that are blue and purple. So the ones I listed will definitely get pollinated, which means more seeds will get to be dispersed. We sure do love pollinators. Preston will tell us a bit more about plant colors attracting animals. See here the bright orange flowers of the jewel weed. And these are meant to attract pollinators like big bumblebees who crawl inside them and pollinate them. You'll also see here how the elderberry has red berries. They're really actually kind of dark. And these berries are this color to attract animals, probably birds, to come eat them. Time to go over your colors badge challenges. For your core challenge, you must take six photos of wild organisms with six different colors. In addition, we'll have weekly challenges for you to stay motivated and curious. This week's challenge is to make a collage. You'll go outside and pick a natural item like a leaf or a flower. Next, you're gonna gather other materials to make a complementary colored background to make your natural item stand out. For more details, you can visit this week's newsletter or go to ecoexplore.net. Don't forget to check your email every Monday for our weekly newsletter filled with member features and fun activities. Also, tune into Eco Explorers Facebook Live every weekday at 2 p.m. to see some exploring in action and maybe get a little inspired. Good luck, have fun, keep exploring. Mm -hmm.